Hello. So today we're going to talk to you about a new study that came out talking about PRP and knee cartilage. Why is this important? Because I have patients that constantly ask me, if I get PRP done, is it going to help my knee? Not just in terms of pain relief, but is it going to get me the same type of relief that I would expect to have from surgery? And we are not going to say that PRP is equivalent to surgery because it definitely depends on your own personal case. But this study is a new, interesting study that provides value, and I'm going to break it down for you right now. But if we haven't met, I'm Dr. Orlando Landrum from Cutting Edge Integrative Pain Centers, and I'm a physician that really looks to be able to see how can we be able to improve patients' pain? How can we be able to get them to the point that they can be able to get the ability to be able to use regenerative medicine and other techniques to punch pain in the face and get back the life that they deserve. Okay, so today what we're going to do is talk a little bit about this article that gives us some insight about how and what these researchers did and what they were able to do in order to be able to identify is PRP a viable treatment um, and how much this can be able to give relief for patients. So one of the things that we want to kind of get into is this particular study. So when we take a look, um, one of the things that we see is this article is pretty interesting. So kind of scrolling back just a little bit. So it evaluated the MRI changes after platelet-rich plasma in knee osteoarthritis. So what they did is they took uh, an initial evaluation period of let's see one second of 66 patients. And so in evaluating those 66 patients, one of the things that they did was to be able to assess were they eligible. And they excluded 20 of those patients because they didn't meet criteria, right? And so from there, they were left then with 46 patients that um, they did into a randomized grouping. And that randomized grouping showed the following. So it took and put 23 into PRP and exercise and then it took and put 23 into exercise alone. And so what they did was then assess patients after that with the subsequent follow-up and analysis with the context of looking at MRI um, to be able to understand what the underlying issue was. They also looked at how significant patients had um, in terms of the severity of their disease. So to take a quick divergence for a second, I have a patient that reached out to me that was interested in regenerative medicine, and they told me, well, you know what? Hey, doc, look, um, my orthopedic doctor tells me that I'm bone on bone, I'm 68 years old, and um, can stem cells be able to give me some degree of relief? And my immediate response to him was the following. I'm like, well, first of all, um, number one, because your doctor says that you're bone on bone, with respect to that doc, because we didn't relay and we didn't have a conversation per se, that doesn't mean anything to me. 
because frequently, as we've talked in some other lectures, they are not giving us a true understanding of something that's called a kellergren lawrence grade. And there are different grades that based off of the aspect of your severity. The orthopedic surgeons know this, but they frequently won't talk to patients within that guard and that context because they expect that you may not understand it. So it's your either surgery or not. And I think that's a very simplistic um, statement. Many people want to understand why they're having the problems that they're having, why they can't be able to walk, why are they having pain? And when you talk about the degree of cartilage, the context, contextual statement of saying bone on bone isn't always giving people an understanding like you would hope that they would have. So let's talk a little bit further. WOMAC is a study that assesses the aspect of functionality and it has different criteria as you can kind of see below. And then they looked at um, patellofemoral cartilage volume with some really interesting things from an MRI standpoint. But let's get down to the nitty gritty of it. At the very end, what did we end up seeing? So what they saw is when they split up into these two groups and it's a small powered study. So what that means is for those of you who are not like big time scientists that don't read papers like this all the time, one of the things that we wanna do on our channel is to make sure that we can break it down for you so that you can understand what's out there and we don't have to just talk as I'm the authority or another doctor's authority, but you can have an understanding of like what's really going on and really be able to address it. So what they ended up finding was the following. Let's get down to it. So what they found was, uh, here we go. It was observed to the control group, PRP was effective in the improvement of patellofemoral cartilage. Let's expand this just a little bit. For both the volume and synovitis. Even though a longer study with a higher number of subjects in comparison with other treatment methods is recommended for further evaluation, they were able to see that there were changes in cartilage in an improved fashion, as well as an improvement in overall pain. So there are some nuanced dynamics of this. If we really wanted to get into the, the full context, one of the things that they talked about is that there were evaluations that they utilized using um, leukocyte poor type PRP, which is a specific dynamic that we've talked about in other lectures. So if you're interested, check out our YouTube channel that gives further understanding about some of the things about differences in PRP and their concentration. Um, in our clinic, we can be able to do concentrations that are much more powerful than that if need be. And there are other things that could be tracked that they didn't necessarily get into, which are things like BMI, body mass index, is that impactful versus not. But at the end of the day, the summarized version of this is that we were able to find out that PRP not only can be able to improve pain and function, but it also can be able to improve cartilage in certain select patients. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you being able to uh, listen in and hear some of our context of what we're talking about. If you're interested in being able to have an understanding about what it is that we do and how to be able to kind of get further information, by all means, take a look at our YouTube channel that you can kind of see scrolling below. Um, if you go to Cutting Edge Pain Relief, it will allow for you to be able to look into things like PRP and stem cells and other treatment options. Additionally, if you want more information about how to be able to get insight about pain, regenerative medicine, other topics, go to sign up for our newsletter at cuttingedgepain.com slash newsletter, and we'll put you on for having notices for other different uh, talks and considerations for our interview series. So as an aside, we have an upcoming interview series with the owner of CryoEdge Elite, who's going to talk to us about cryotherapy, like the tubs that, you know, you see on the athletes, like things like, um, in certain movies after they've had a big game, you're like, oh, wow, is this what they have? We have this here locally. And we wanna talk about how that can be able to improve pain. So if those are things that have interest to you, by all means, sign up for our newsletter, check out our YouTube channel, and thank you so much and have a great day.